Hi, welcome to Trailers from Hell. I'm Larry Karaszewski. Robert Altman is one of the greatest directors of all time, but unfortunately, a lot of his films were not financially successful. Uh, so God bless the 1970s, because not only was Altman able to find financial backing for his own movies, he was also able to produce the works of other people, uh, and the first one being Alan Rudolph and Richard Baskin's Welcome to L.A. Welcome to L.A. Music. From that cold December night, I had my Sex. bag packed for adventure. Flirtations. Alan Rudolph is a very good director, but his movies at times feel so Altman-esque that it took a while before film critics and people began to recognize his talents. Probably not until the 1980s with the one-two punch of Choose Me and Trouble in Mind, both terrific films worth checking out. But this here is my favorite Alan Rudolph film. I love Welcome to L.A., probably because it does sort of feel like an unofficial sequel to Altman's Nashville. Dozens of characters bouncing off each other, uh, the use of a major American city as a character, and, of course, Robert Altman's repertory company, uh, front and center, his favorite actors, Geraldine Chaplin, Sally Kellerman, Keith Carradine, Alan Nichols. Most important in this context is Richard Baskin. Baskin co-wrote most of the songs in Nashville. Here, he not only wrote the score, but he sings them on screen, kind of like a Greek chorus. Baskin is a terrific guy. He's heir to the Baskin Robbins Ice Cream Company, and he's brothers of uh, Edie Baskin, the Saturday Night Live photographer. I once did an evening with Baskin at the American Cinematheque because I think his work is so strong in both Nashville and Welcome to L.A. I feel that he almost deserves co-screenwriter credit. Both films let the music speak for character. Just think of, of what the song 200 Years does for the introduction to Henry Gibson's character in Nashville. It's pretty essential. Now the actors here in Welcome to L.A. Are, are pretty terrific, but if I had to single one person out, it would probably be Geraldine Chaplin. Uh, very raw and emotional. Uh, Rudolph really knew how to use her. He works with her again in the underrated Remember My Name. Now there is one piece of weird trivia on this movie, John Wayne almost played the Denver Pyle role. That would have been something. The Duke made plenty of films in the 1970s, but he never really made a 1970s movie. Uh, it would have been really interesting to see how he'd fit into this hazy LA tapestry. And certainly it would have raised a profile of a solid movie that has been unjustly forgotten. Welcome to LA, city of the one night stands. Of life. 